I am going to record for you my one of my first lessons. So we're going to be starting actually in chapter 14, which is acids and bases. So we're going to start out this week really focusing on what is an acid, what is a base, what are some other properties, how can you tell the difference between them. I'm going to have you guys kind of look around your house and try to find different items in your home that are acids or items in your home that are a base, looking at some industrial uses of them, that type of stuff. So I do want to start out, though, going through with you guys a little bit about the properties of acids. So let me pull up the PowerPoint for you. So this is the properties of acids and their behaviors. So first of all, what does it mean to be an acid or base? How can you tell the difference between the two of them? Acids have a very sour taste. We actually do eat some things that are acidic. Uh, lemons are acidic. Vinegar is very acidic. I don't recommend eating all different types of acids but they do give you that kind of sour taste. Some people really like that personally, not me. I'm not a huge fan of acidic foods. Bases, if you were to eat them, they do have more of a bitter taste. And when it comes to how bases feel, like soap, they do typically have a more slippery feel to them. As you guys have already noticed in the labs, acids and bases can cause certain dyes to change color. Those dyes are called acid-base indicators. They are indicators because they actually indicate whether something is an acid or a base. We've used the litmus paper in the lab, and you have noticed, hopefully, that acids, the litmus will turn red. Bases, it will turn more on the bluish side of things. There are other indicators out there that are that can be used to indicate if something is an acid or a base. A nice household one is actually red cabbage. And I'm hoping that next week, you guys, when we start talking about pH more, that you'll be able to actually run a mini lab at home using the red cabbage as a pH indicator. Another characteristic of acids is they will react with metals. Now we have talked a little bit already about the activity series when it comes to metals, that your most reactive ones will be on the top, the least reactive on the bottom, meaning that everything above it can replace those that are below it. Acid metal reactions are typically single displacement reactions. Hydrogen gas will be produced and then the metal compound will be produced. Bases will not usually react with a metal. And not every acid reacts with every single metal. So you on the activity series, you have to look at where the metal is actually in comparison to where the hydrogen is because it is the hydrogen, the acidic hydrogen, and the metal that will be changing places. In your book, there is an activity series on page two or 482 that tells you which metals will react with acids the easiest. We've already seen some of that in the lab when we put uh, the magnesium in hydrochloric acid. Remember that one reacted pretty much right away. Also, when we put the zinc in the hydrochloric acid, that one also reacted basically right away. So here's just kind of an image. Uh, how do you know if it's happening? If the metals actually react with the acids, you will see color changes, you will see bubbles. Just like here, you will see those bubbles actually showing up on um, the edge of the metal that you put in there. So that tells you that there's a reaction happening. These bubbles are the hydrogen gas that is being produced through that single displacement reaction. Carbonates, our acids will also react with any compound that has the carbonate ion, the CO3 2 minus. When that happens, you will form carbon dioxide, gas, water, and some other compound. Bases, again, will not react with carbonates. Now, carbonates are actually found in, or calcium carbonate is found in shells and other marine critters. 
Limestone is a sedimentary rock that is formed from the buildup, the constant buildup of that calcium carbonate as those marine critters die and those shells get basically piled on top of each other, they can turn into limestone. Then that limestone can actually go through heat and pressure and change into marble. Limestone and marble were used to produce a lot of different types of statues, especially in the ancient Greek, ancient Roman times. Acid rain, which is rain that has a little bit of acid in it, so it is not a pH of seven, it is slightly more acidic. Acid rain will actually corrode away, will destroy marble and limestone statues. Why? Because they have that calcium carbonate in it and the acid is reacting with the carbonate. So it will actually start to destroy those statues. So what does it mean to be an acid? An acid is any substance that produces what's called the hydronium ion. Basically, you put it in water, that one of those molecules, it loses its hydrogen. Okay, It loses a hydrogen. That hydrogen attaches to the water, forming H3O plus, hydronium. <clears throat> the hydrogen that is transferred is called an acidic hydrogen. To be an acid, they have to be able to give away a hydrogen ion. That is what makes them so powerful. Then what is left behind is the negatively charged ion that would be left. Only the hydrogen that is bonded to highly electronegative elements will be acidic. So hydrogen has to be bonded, that positive hydrogen has to be bonded to something that is a very strong negative element. Hydrochloric acid, HCl, chlorine is a halogen. It is very negative, very strong. Any of the guys over there in that halogen family, group 17, are very highly electronegative carry a very strong negative charge. All those with a hydrogen will produce an acid. Now, if you put hydrogen with something like carbon, like in all the hydrocarbons and methane, CH4, those are nonpolar bonds. Anytime you have a carbon with a hydrogen and it will be nonpolar, those hydrogens are not acidic because the carbon's not gonna give them away. Alcohols, where you have an OH at the end of it, alcohols are also not acidic. When it comes to the hydrogens, they are always lost as well, one at a time. Also, minor pure water does not conduct electricity. We know that. We've talked about that. They need to have something in there for the electricity to run through. Some substances can dissolve in the pure water to form those ions, and those substances conduct electricity, which is why we call them electrolytes, electro for electricity. The process of forming ions in a solution is referred to as ionization, and acids will form ions in a process that is called acid ionization. So I hope that worked out all right. Um, if you need to refer back, you can refer back at any time. I'll also just post the individual PowerPoint in the Google Classroom for you guys so you can just go through the PowerPoint if you don't want to hear the sound that goes along with it. <laughs>